In this Coco animation breakdown, you're going to learn three insights that will massively level up your body mechanics in 90 days. Earlier this year, several of my students applied some of these insights and got hired shortly after. So by the end of this video, even if all you do is take away one insight, like shape changing spine curves, you're gonna move closer to your dream job. Keep watching. What's up animators? Rusty here from Rusty Animator. I've been a professional animator for five plus years in VFX games and TV. And this channel is about teaching you how to animate at a higher level so you can quickly reach your dream job in movies or games without massive debt. Today I'm going to help you level up your mechanics by looking at Pixar's Coco. Let's dig in. Coco is easily my favorite recent Pixar film. The story is great and the animation is superb. You could study it all for days and still be drooling. I mean, just look at the dog Dante here. Oh my god, it's so awesome. Okay, okay, let's get back on track. We're gonna focus on three major insights that you can steal to level up your own mechanics. First one will be bouncing hips, second one will be shape change, and the third will be lead and follow. Here, let me show you. Bouncing hips. If your mechanics feel rough and powerless, the hips are probably where you need to start. The hips are the source of power for most every move and is usually neglected by animation students. Pixar animators, of course, provide outstanding examples of hip movement in all of Coco. It's in the broad cartoony clips with Dante, it's in the much more reserved dialogue scenes with Ernesto, and it's even in animations outside of the movie, like this short promotional soccer clip. Let's look carefully at the hips here. The first part to note is that your character's hips should behave like the soccer ball in this scene does. Every move should have vertical ups and downs. For the kicks, you see Hector anticipate down before hopping up. It's broad and it's obvious, but it's also in little moves like this settle. In real life, this is how people move. They gather energy by going down towards gravity and they use that energy to push themselves up and away from gravity. Every move should also have an arc. If you were animated just the soccer ball around in this scene, you probably wouldn't forget to give each bounce an arc, even for the smallest of moves. So why would you forget about it for the hips? It's simple, yet too many students forget this and they wonder why their animation ends up feeling robotic. For the hops, kicks, jumps, and settles, there are big and small hip arcs, which instantly makes Hector's entire body feel more organic. It's all in the hips. Happy Gilmore, anybody? Weight shifts. As humans, we all shift our weight from leg to leg constantly. And it's far more appealing from a posing standpoint to have weight that isn't evenly split 50-50 between each leg. So in your animations, you should always be asking yourself, where is the weight? Should the hips be more on the right leg or the left leg? Which leg should I favor next? How should the weight shift in 3D? Should I move closer to camera or further away? In Hector's opening pose, his weight is more on the screen left leg. Then we feel it become more balanced as he lands from the hop. Miguel keeps himself from falling by shifting his weight forward and planting that screen right foot. Then he anticipates forward slightly while taking a step with the screen left foot so he can shift his weight backwards and hop up to catch Hector's head. With the hips, you should also remember to rotate every way possible. To make the hips rotate organically, each rotation should tilt, twist, and bend. At the start, Hector rolls the ball out with his leg. The hips twist towards the left screen foot, taking the weight, which also allows the leg to stretch out far enough for the ball but the hips also tilt to more of a 45 degree angle and they bend back away from camera. Using all these together creates better arcs, poses, and weight. These are a few reasons overall why bouncing hips are crucial for leveling up your mechanics. It's what everything is based on. But now let's build on top of that with the second body mechanics insight. Shape change. Shape change will further enhance the weight and appeal you've already built in with the hips. And it's something you should build into your key poses your breakdowns, anticipations, basically everything. Why? It gives us a visual contrast to really feel the physics and the emotion of a movement. Without our character's body changing shape, they feel robotically stiff. Spine curves. 
as Miguel slides into Hector's hip and breaks his spine. Ah, that sounds a little painful, doesn't it? We visually see Hector's body curl screen right into a C shape. Then when he lands, it flips into the reverse C shape or he holds for a bit. These two contrasting shapes let us feel the impact and the recovery of what happened. Of course, those extreme shapes are not the only ones that matter. The slight C shape just before the impact is also critical to helping us feel the extreme. And the S shape breakdown helps us feel the weight with lead and follow, which we'll talk about soon. So these spine curves can, can give you a lot of shape change to enhance your mechanics, but to really take it to the next level, there's something else to add. Squash and stretch. When Hector's spine is gone, the landing impact and pose is enhanced by squashing his whole body down. And he stays kind of in that position. It allows us to feel that he's now like a little bit crippled, can't move the same, and he's a little worried about it. It also helps us to feel the next stretch as his spine floats back into place where it should be. With this squash and stretch built in everywhere, there's so much organic life to each move. I mean, just look at Hector's happy recovery after the, the stretch to get his spine back. Or look at Miguel's un poco loco performance. Uh, there's so much weight and so much extra mo emotion, you know, just from that squash and stretch being applied. This is another fantastic way to really level up your mechanics. But of course, there's more you can do. Once you're moving characters around with some decent weight and organic feel, you're ready to dig into the third insight. Lead and follow. When you're animating any move, you should ask yourself what is leading and what is following. Nothing ever moves at the same time. Often the hips go first and then the rest, but sometimes the head will go first and the rest follows or another body part. This is both helpful for organic weighty body mechanics as well as acting. When Hector talks to Ernesto here, his eyes stay focused as his hips lead the turn to go away. They start shifting the weight just before the hands come up and they keep turning away to, to walk off. The chest follows next and then the head a few frames after. One, two, three. However, after Hector stops, he decides to come back and make a point. When he turns back, his head leads the action and pulls the rest of the body along for the ride. The head, the shoulder, the arm, chest, and then the hips. The hips could have led the action here and it technically would have been correct. But choosing to use the head to lead gives it a completely different feeling for both the acting and the mechanics. Here's a broader action example. Hector playing guitar. Right from the first move, his hips initiate the hop, the spine and the head drag behind a bit, and then they lean in. What really drags and follows last, though, is the screen left arm. This gives, you know, that wham rock and roll feeling to his, his riff. Thank you. Thank you very much. Later, when Hector starts his, you know, diving turn, his hips again start the action with a little anticipation up and back. But to give that move that, you know, diving into the excitement feeling that they want, the head then takes over, leads the turn with the hips dragging behind and the legs follow further even behind those hips. They're like really the last thing to show up as he hits his full jump. So adding more lead and follow into your animation breaks up your movements for a very organic feel. And the better you get at applying it, especially with shape change and bouncing hips, the more your mechanics will amaze for even simple animations like a soccer ball kick. So how should you go about practicing these mechanical insights and leveling up? Well, what you shouldn't do is practice all three immediately in a 20 second animation. Start instead with one insight, bouncing hips, then practice just one part of it like vertical movement or weight shift and practice it with a short simple animation like a sidestep or a 180 degree turn or a hop. If it's more than three seconds long, you're doing too much. Once you feel good with that, add on one other small part to practice, then another, and then another. If you do that for an hour a day, your body mechanics will level up very fast. And if you really want to level up faster, don't miss my email tomorrow. It will test your skills and give you an invitation to a free live event with me where I'll help you reach new heights. You can visit this link or check out the description below to join my email newsletter and that way you don't miss out. 
Now I'm curious, which mechanics in sight do you think will help your animations the most? Shape change or lead and follow? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have a chat with you about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, then subscribe and ring the bell for more just like this in the future. That way you don't miss out. Until next time, feel free to check out a different animation analysis or one of our other animation videos. Happy animating.